Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part one of my making a mobile game in Flow Lab series. We're gonna go step by step through the process of making a simple touchscreen mobile game in Flow Lab. This video is meant for someone who's at least a little bit familiar with Flow Lab already. So if you've never used it before, you might wanna start by watching the introductory video tutorial series, and I'll put a link to those in the description. Okay, let's get started. We have an empty project here, so let's first give it a name. This is a mobile game, so let's give it a portrait orientation so it will fit a little more comfortably on a phone screen. We're going to start with the background, so we'll select the background layer and then just start creating our background tiles. For the sprites in this game, I'm going to be using the skiing assets by Kenny.nl. If you're using any upgraded version of Flow Lab, you're going to have these available in your sprite editor already. If you're using the free version of Flow Lab, that's also not a problem. I'll put the download links in the description so you'll have access to all the sprites that I'm using to build this game. The important thing to pay attention to when creating the background is that the top and bottom edges align so that the background can scroll and repeat smoothly. I'm going to copy this light blue color from the background of our sprite and use that to set the background color of our game so that they match. Then I can grab the darker blue color from the sprite and use that to make a solid blue sprite to fill in our trail. Now, creating all these sprites is going to be a really repetitive process, so I will speed up the video while I build the background layout. Okay, now let's go to the game layer and create our player object. The type will be skier. The name will be player. We'll adjust the physics. Make sure that this object is movable, not affected by gravity and we want the direction to be down so that we're traveling downhill. Now we'll just select a new sprite. Okay. Let's start adding some logic to our player. We want the game to be controlled by tapping on the screen, so we'll start with a mouse click trigger. We'll enable capture clicks anywhere so that we can tap anywhere on the screen. Now while we're running our game on a touch screen device, this behavior will get activated by screen touches instead of mouse clicks. Now we'll add a global to store our speed value in. This way we can access our current speed from anywhere in the game. Next, we'll add a number that we can use to increment our speed on every click. I'll name it Acceleration. It's a really good idea to name all of your values. This will make your logic much easier to understand when you come back to it in the future. Now, every time we click, the speed will be incremented by one. We just need to add a velocity so we can start moving our player down the trail. 
Okay, let's test it out. All right, every time we click, he moves a little faster. Now let's add a camera so the view will follow our player as he moves. Make sure to set the background to repeat. And test it out. All right, every time we click, he moves a little faster. All right, everything's working, but I would really rather have the player closer to the top of the screen instead of automatically centered by the camera. So let's adjust the camera position manually instead of auto scrolling. To do that, we'll start with an always and add an extractor to get the player's current Y position. And use an expression to subtract a little bit from our player's position so that the camera stays slightly ahead of the player. We want the camera to stay about four blocks ahead of the player. And since every block is 32 pixels, we'll subtract 128 from the player's position. And that should place the, the camera about where we want it. Now we can turn off auto scroll since we're moving the camera ourselves and test it out. Let's move the behaviors so we can see what we're doing. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now let's make him turn each time we click as well so that we'll have a way to steer this guy. Let's start with a toggle, so we'll change a direction on each click. Now we'll add two different rotation values for turning left and right. About 30 degrees should be good. And we'll use that to set the rotation. Okay, it looks pretty good, but now I wanna change one more thing. The scrolling looks a little bit choppy at the default 30 frames a second. So let's bump that up to 60. Okay, it looks a lot smoother at 60 frames a second. All right, so we have a controllable player and a scrolling background, uh, but it's not really much of a game yet. In the next video, we'll add some basic game logic to handle crashing and restarting. Thanks for watching.